Hello and welcome to The Silver Show. Today we have a very inspiring entrepreneur, all female, joining us and all coming up on the show. Welcome. start today's episode, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the power of your vote. With the American presidential election coming up and following on from the UK's own elections last year and the referendum vote this year, which is Brexit as you know, if studies and social media are any indication, many voters in democratic systems feel that their vote does not count or alternatively does not make a difference. Now the power of your vote may get someone elected but this means very little in a time where trust in our elected representatives have never been low. What feels like widespread discontent has fed into the rise of protest campaigns, which are at their most prominent in civil rights movements across the world. This assuredly must be evidence of the dysfunction of our current democratic systems. Yet on the other hand of the spectrum, there is the argument that these protest campaigners do not offer any answers. Whereas civil rights campaigns are clearly outlined goals the protest movements of today seem intent on criticizing the status quo, which is justified, but not offering any viable solution. So I put it to you, is support for modern democracy failing across Western Europe and North America? Is there diminishing faith in democracy as a political system? And no matter where you are in the world, will you be voting come your next election? And if not, why will you be abstaining your vote? I'd like to hear your opinion, share your comments below or on Twitter with hashtag SilverTV. Joining us today, we have Zoe Bennett. She is the personification of Through Adversity Breeds Success, which also happens to be her core belief. She's also an avid entrepreneur, having founded the company Training Personified and the award ceremony, the Midland Business and Community Charity Awards to recognize and highlight the contribution of businesses, charities, and community leaders throughout the Midlands. Welcome to the show, Zoe. Thank you for having Good me. Day. Thank you so much for coming. And I'm glad you're here because, you know, this show here, when I started the show and, and I was contemplating some of the ideas, there was a few people that I, I called. And some people were helpful but weren't that helpful. And some were wanting to charge me for simple things. And uh, I remember I contacted you and you fired off a lot of information to me by WhatsApp and email and different things. And uh, you never thought twice about it, you know? And I want to thank you for that, you know, oh, when, when I started, you know? So having you on the show is, is it's a, it's a honor because we can see where dream and vision become a reality. If you remember when we had a discussion, yes. right? Yes. Now, the core topic is through adversity breeds success, which is about you and which is what you talk about. I want you to tell us what was the main event in your life that brought about this mindset, through adversity breeds success. Well, I had a very traumatic incident happen to me mm -hmm. and I had to find a way to pull myself through it yes. and try and inspire other people at the same time and not just think about myself and how it's affected me, mm -hmm. had to be very mindful of how it affected other people. Now, my father, he was uh, murdered in December 2011, mm -hmm. and I, I had a choice. I had a choice of either to just crumble and cry about it, and that's it, and give up, mm -hmm. because my dad was my heartbeat, he was mm -hmm. my everything, and without him, to me, there was no point mm -hmm. of anything, there was no purpose. Or, I could have looked at it this way that I don't want this happening to somebody else mm -hmm. and what can I do to make a difference that someone doesn't have to go through the pain mm -hmm. that I have to go through. So I, I chose the, the latter. Mm -hmm. So when you mention someone not going through, is it not going through the incident that happened to your father or going through the, the different type of after effects? Everything. Yeah. The incidents, <clears throat> of course. Um, because my father, he went over to Jamaica and he was actually murdered in Jamaica. Yes. And even while my dad was alive, because we used to have the conversations, it was just a given that mm -hmm. returnees, 
they tend to, from time to time, they're murdered, and it's just a given. It's, it's just something that happened. Mm -hmm. And we was of the mindset that shouldn't be what happens. If you want to retire, you want to go back, you want to enjoy mm -hmm. your life, what you've set out for yourself. And especially in your homeland. Exactly. Land of your birth, yes. You know, especially if um, remittances have sent back so many times over that you've helped so many people, why can't you now go and enjoy it? Mm -hmm. So he was really upset about that, that you have to be fearful, you have to be always on looking out to make sure that you're safe. And um, the other thing is that the, when I've seen in the press where English people have been murdered, uh, British people have been murdered in Jamaica, there's mm. been no convictions. Mm. It's just the trials have been extended, beyond extended, or not even got to trial. Mm -hmm. And the Lancashire Evening Post even um, they put some statistics out that out of 100% of murders that happen in Jamaica, mm -hmm. only 5% go to trial and conviction. My dad was not mm -hmm. going to be a statistic. So, so of the amount mm -hmm. that has happened, you said only 5% go to court. Yeah, and conviction. So the conviction, if 5% goes to court, how much of that 5% is the conviction? But that's it, that's the conviction, that's yeah, the conviction. that's it. Right, right. You know, so they'll go there, but what happens is, in my case, the trial was postponed seven different times. Mm -hmm. So people don't persevere, they don't keep trying and fighting, they give up in the end. It's like the saying, why am I can't bother? Yes, yeah. 100%, that's, how, that's what's been happening. So because and in the meantime, things happen, people get threatened, as you know, um, I had death threats also, yes. and people will rather step back and not persevere. But I don't buy into that, I don't buy into bullying. Yes. And that's one thing I'll always stand up, whether I win or lose, mm. I'll always stand up for what is right and mm -hmm. bullying is not right. Yeah, and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, um, to understand more about this story, because it's a very long story as to what happened to your father, um, where can they find a clip? We're going to put it, there's a clip. Yeah, there's a clip on um, YouTube mm -hmm. and it's 4N TV. Yes. And if you just type in Zoe Bennett, yes. 4N TV, yes. it will come up. And it will tell you the full story of um, of how he was murdered, mm. the death threats that I had, and the yes. people that were involved, and how we eventually um, we 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 won through. Yes, you know. But 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 can you tell us um, in, in a nutshell some of the the challenges that you also went through during the process of that time? Because it wasn't just while he the, 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 trying to get a conviction, but there are some other challenges. You had. There was plenty of challenges yeah. along the way. I actually worked um, for the Jamaica Tourist Board mm. at the time. And um, at the time when it happened, I luckily was on annual leave, so I could go over there and sort everything out for my father. And um, initially, um, the Director General of Jamaica, she was very supportive. Mm. She has always been supportive. That's Carol Guntley, brilliant. Yeah, Carol Guntley. Yeah. Lovely lady. Um, very lovely lady. Mm -hmm. And um, she met me off the flight. And on the day that my father had been murdered, um, on the, just before I went over on the flight, I typed to my family and friends, my father had been murdered in Jamaica mm -hmm. this morning. And then someone asked me what happened. I said, the bastards had killed my dad. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll be going over there and I'll have one eye open. The bastards can try and kill me too. Well, and the, the bastard is yeah. the bastard. The one yeah. killed him, yeah. bastard. The bastard. You're talking about Jamaica, you're the bastard. Yeah, there okay, you go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and they said the police were slow on the uptake. Because mm. I had an inkling who did this. Um, my father went to the police a week before he was murdered. And um, the, the, his nephew, He'd stolen something from him mm -hmm. and he admitted it. He went to the, the police station and the nephew admitted it. Mm -hmm. And even though it was all written down as a statement taken and everything, which I have a copy of that, mm -hmm. him admitting to a crime, they let him go. Mm -hmm. And a week later, my father's been murdered. Wow. So um, once I got over to Jamaica to go and sort out my dad's murder, and the director general met me and said that the Minister of Tourism was in uproar because I used the word Jamaica in the sentence. It and was, I defamed. It was Jamaica, yeah. Yeah, the, that's you, where it happened. That's where it happened. So this is Jamaica. Okay. Right. So I don't know what else I could have said. I couldn't mm. have said in Beirut, in Beijing, or, or wherever it may. Mm. It was the reality is it was in Jamaica. So there was no defamation. It was just mm. real. It was the truth. Um, there was no intention, of course, because I love Jamaica. Mm. My dad, he honestly, he was such a patriot. He loved Jamaica. If you cut him open, mm. the word Jamaica would run straight through. Because I understand your dad had a, a, has this very big house in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and what he also does, he allowed the church to use that, 
his house. And but, the police. And the police well, have their free. meetings yeah. free. Mm -hmm. uh, and when people come over from overseas, mm -hmm. he opens it up because what I gathered from our research is that it, it, it wasn't on a drive to let me make some money now. It was more like, I want to just give back. And give you know but tell us now i mean because there's a lot and and people will be able to find that but 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 something happened with your employment mm -hmm. yes so a day before my annual leave was meant to finish mm -hmm. um i'd um i had a correspondence from my boss asking me where i am mm -hmm. i explained that i've just brought my dad's body back into the uk and the english law is that you have to re-identify the body mm -hmm. Um, and that same day, um, I got a letter to say that I cannot have any annual leave off because I needed to sort out my dad's funeral and that I was suspended yeah. instead for using the word Jamaica, basically. Wow. So, so, Zoe, what you're saying is that through the trauma of what you went through as anybody and Facebook now has become like our pal, our friend, you know what I mean? Um, you actually type this information on Facebook. Yes, it was on Facebook on a private Your page. Your private page, mm -hmm. yes. And as a result of that, you were suspended. Oh, exactly. Was it, were you sacked? I was suspended. Yeah, you were suspended, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was in January 2012. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, that's terrible. That's very terrible. And um, sorry to hear that. And our condolences to your father, I mean, to yourself and everything. But at the same time, you're championing through. And through this thing which happened, which is, and sometimes one cannot find the words, but I want to talk about mindset, you know, um, how the mind is defined, the established set of attitudes held by someone. Now, I think you pass yourself off as a coach as well, mm -hmm. as a consultant. Tell me now, what is that mindset that makes you reach the point that you're sitting here now, creating these awards, wanting to um, empower people? after such trauma, because you're right, you're right. You, you really said a while ago that some people will shut off and close down, or some will soar. Mm -hmm. Why do you soar? What is that mindset? Well, um, going back to the um, incident where I was suspended, um, eventually I persevered, yeah. and um, there was lots of challenges I faced mm -hmm. and through the Jamaica Tourist Board, and for instance, making me go to see occupational health a week before I was due to give birth, mm -hmm. to see if I was fit to work. You know, um, and that was mindset, not to let that get you so down. So you were pregnant at that time? I was pregnant at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, I, in, in the end, perseverance, the mindset, mm -hmm. I won the case against the Jamaica mm -hmm. Tourist Board. Now, regarding the tribunal, what happened then? I actually mm -hmm. won the tribunal eventually. Mm -hmm. um, it took a very long time. But in October 2014, I won on all the counts and mm -hmm. um, they paid me out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's in the public domain, so I am freely mm -hmm. able to speak about it. If yeah. I wanted to name names, I could. I choose not to. Okay. Because for me, I have to always be mindful about my father and his love for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> obviously that has to go come first yes, in my yes, eyes. Yes. And how do you feel towards Jamaica? Jamaica didn't do any of this to me. Individuals mm -hmm. did this to me. Mm -hmm. They chose not to have any compassion. They chose to try and make my life hell and at a time when I was at my lowest and obviously pregnant as well. And that's what helped me turn around my mindset to say, well, do you know, I have to show other people out there when you're being bullied and mm -hmm. you feel like you're being bullied, mm -hmm. that you have to stand up to people, whether you think you're going to win or lose. As long mm -hmm. as you're right in what you're fighting for, then you must persevere. And that's mm -hmm. what mindset comes down to, so your belief. So um, that's, that's, that's good and, and that's, that's really powerful. So you have coaches and consultants often say it's a matter of changing one mind to change their situation. So what you're saying is that did you change your mind or your mind was like that already but you just activated? I believe I activated it yes. because I was taught very well and wisely by a really great mentor, which was my dad. Mm. He would tell me saying, it's like, never mm. let your left hand know what your right mm. hand's doing. It's never too late for a shower of rain. Shortcuts no make it, you know? And it's a case of, I tapped into all that and yes. that's what changed my mindset. Mm. And mindset is about trying to look at things positively and not looking at the negative. Yes. If you can just do something as small as that and look at what you can achieve out mm -hmm. of life, not at what you've failed at. For instance, I always teach people that 
failure is success in disguise. Yes. And if you actually look at it like that, you're thinking, ah, oh, actually, yes. It's about yeah. learning from where things have gone wrong. You, you know, at the end of our show, we always ask persons to give their mantra, the key things. And I believe you have jumped the gun a while ago by saying failure is success in disguise. Oh, I have another. I've got plenty you know, out there. But that, 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 that's powerful. <laughs> yeah. I, want to, yeah. I want to zero in. Because mm -hmm. One of the things about the show is like I, I try to find key words and key factors that can sort of expand them. Failure mm -hmm. is success in disguise. While many people see failure as, oh, I give up. But actually what you're trying to say... It's a learning keep curve. Keep talking about yeah. that one. Failure yeah. is yeah. something that, without the failure, how do you know what success is? Yes. How do you benchmark it? Mm. You know? And if you don't go through certain situations in life, you don't realise how blessed you are. That, that, that's very awesome now. So, so what you're trying to say to me now is that no one can actually know what success is because they cannot measure it against anything. Exactly. So you have to have some form of failure. Yes. Therefore, people, what I'm going to say is that aim to fail and then you'll find success. <laughs> I might be flipping but, right but there. Naturally, <laughs> naturally, people will do things yeah, along the yeah. way. But it's the, yeah. the key is identifying it. Yes. It's not saying just go and fail yeah, on of purpose. Course, uh, yeah. it's, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's saying yeah, 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 that yeah. when you do feel that you yeah. haven't achieved what you want to achieve, yeah. that's failure. Then you look at what happened in that situation. Yeah. A silly person will do the same thing over and over again and yes. ex expect different outcomes. Yes. So the whole point is when you are failing yes you know it may not be a huge failure it, it, it's all down to degrees mm. of people's being subjective but when you do it's a case of assessing it and saying well do you know what if i tweaked mm. it and change this a little mm. bit then i can actually succeed going so therefore forward. if you're going to speak to one of um your um you're going to give a free advice now to someone listening how does someone then mary jane is listening and paul is listening and say i want to ask how does one effectively go about changing how they think and how they feel I want to ask her, how do I change how I think and how I feel? What did you say? Okay, well, you, first of all, you've got to find out yourself and ask mm. yourself, how am I feeling? Yes. You know? Face it. Face it. And the key is write it down. Mm. Write it down on a piece of paper. Write down how you're feeling. Uh, write down on a, a piece pen. of paper. Can I write it down? What do you want to achieve? And My I, team is jumping up. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, yeah. do a planner. Yeah. Do a weekly planner mm. and do an AM do a midday yes. and an evening planner seven days a week and put in there exactly what you want to achieve, yes. what tasks you have in, in hand. And at the same time, in that planner, while you're going ahead, write down the things you've done wrong, yes. write down the things you've done right. Yes. And then through that planner, then you can actually assess it and do better the following week. Right. Then once you've you looked at your following week and you've compared and contrast, you realise where you where you're going wrong right. or where you're going right, and life is not always about looking at where you've gone wrong. Mm -hmm. It's giving yourself a pat on the back for when you do things that mm -hmm. are right, as well yeah. as giving other people a pat mm -hmm. on their back when you see them doing something. And good. the interesting bit about all of that is that that only happens when you're moving forward. Yes. So you've got to make that step at the same time. You have that's to. that's awesome. You're made a step now. You're made a step as well as you're now the managing director of training personified. Yes. Now, is that something which does not encapsulate Zoe? You know, what is the aim of your company? Who do you cater to? What can clients expect to gain from you? What is the value added? Okay, well, the motivation for training Personified yes. was because I didn't like employees being treated in a particular manner mm. because of what I went through. And I, I feel that if you go to work, you want to feel like you're part of a family environment and you feel you want to be yes, there yes. and there's no negativity. Mm -hmm. And by helping people through the customer service training that I deliver, as well as communication skills, interpersonal skills, leadership and management, mm -hmm. it's simply just put really blatantly in layman's terms, how to get along with each other. Yes. yes. You know, why wouldn't you not want to have a, a good environment mm -hmm. that people get along with each other and ultimately, by doing that, you deliver results for the organisation. Mm -hmm. So currently, I am actually providing confidence building workshops mm -hmm. for ladies through human trafficking, sex trafficking, domestic violence and honour based abuse. And this is across the board, any race? Any, any group, race, yeah. yes. Um, and I'm actually an ambassador of several charities at the moment and I'm going through seven week um, processes with these ladies yes. and 12 week processes. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on part one. See you next week for part two.
magician who's one of the leading magicians mm. in the, in fact he is, um, he's an award-winning magician doing yes. a cabaret show. We have a MOBO nominee um, singing, we have um, a contestant from The Voice, yes. and we have a Ghanaian opera, male opera singer. Can I come and do a rap? <laughs> you can do what you <laughs> want. It's today. about bringing people together. <laughs> so, you know, I realise that I have to also set an example that I'm sick of seeing segregation. I'm sick of people saying it's either this camp or that camp you have to belong to mm -hmm. if you're of a particular colour. And it's all about saying that people are people. And we have Gavin Williamson, he's white. Mm -hmm. We have um, Craig Petty, he's white. We have Samuel Leeds, the mm -hmm. motivational speaker, who's white. We have Sandra Godley, singer, who's, who's black. Yeah, Pierre, oh, yeah. your assistant is white, isn't he? Um, my assistant is white. Head of communications, Paul Lander. Oh, yeah, I've been yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got an Asian yeah. um, co-presenter, which is Palmy Deanza. Mm -hmm. We have a white co-host as well, which mm -hmm. is Brad Burton, the UK's number mm -hmm. one motivational business speaker. Hi, thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share and like and don't forget to comment but first subscribe. That's video. Zoe, how are you? Fine. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just had Zoe Bennett on the show, on the red chair. It's powerful, very inspiring and uh, Zoe, tell us, what did we talk about? We talk about mindset, we talk about the Midlands Business and Community Charity yes. Awards and we talked about my mentor, my father. Yeah. But also what was very important, people, is about transform, it, I call it transforming one's mindset and how you can, like, how adversity can make two things happen. You can either wallow in the adversity or you can break through and soar from such adversity. And of course, with Zoe, is a person who's soaring I mean, you need to watch this in a couple of weeks' time. And of course, you'll see more information about the MBCC Awards. Yes. Yeah. Tell us quickly about the MBCC Awards. MBCC Awards, 29th of October yes. in the Midlands at the Copthorne Hotel, Merry Hill. And it's only £45 a ticket and all the profits are going to charity. And guess what? Not everything happens in London. Everything is going across into the Midlands as M25, yeah? Okay? Be there or be square. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Zoe. Bye. Okay.